Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to dive a little bit deeper in the IEEE 754 single and double precision standards. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, at first we will observe the IEEE 754 single precision standard. Thereafter, we will observe the IEEE 754 double precision standard. Now, during the previous session, if you remember, we came across all the different IEEE 754 binary floating point standards. Now, I would like to draw your attention to the name and the common name of the standards. Observe, when the name is binary 16, the commonly used name is half precision. Then again, when the name is binary 32, that is, in this particular standard, 32 bits are specified for the storage of the floating point numbers. And in that case, the common name is single precision. Similarly, in case of the standard binary 64, which is also commonly known as double precision, observe, as the dedicated bits for the floating point storage increases from 32 to 64, the commonly used name is also changing from single to double. And the same thing has been maintained in the later conventions as well. So basically what I am trying to mean is, the more the bits we dedicate for the floating point representation, the more precise our closer approximation becomes. Now in today's session, we are going to mainly focus on the single precision that is binary 32 and binary 64 which is double precision. And the reason behind that is, these two are very widely used. So let's begin with the IEEE 754 single precision that is binary 32 first. Now, since in case of IEEE 754 single precision, 32 bits are dedicated for storage of the floating point numbers, that is the reason why the sand bit is of 1 bit, and thereafter the biased exponent is of 8 bits, and finally the remaining 23 bits represent the mantissa part. Now, if you remember, in case of single precision, the exponent bias is axis 127. Now, in the previous session, while studying about the bias, I told you that in case of biased exponent, which is used in IEEE 754 standards, two patterns of the exponent, that is all zeros and all ones, are not used to represent any value in the range of the exponents. And the reason behind that is, the pattern all zeros and all ones are actually used to represent something else. Let's now observe what do the different bit sequences of the 32-bit patterns mean. Now, if you observe, when the exponent bits are all zeros, that is, E is having the value 0 in decimal, and at the same time, if the mantissa bits are also 0, that is, all the 23 bits of the mantissa portion is also having the value stored as 0, in that case, that particular sequence might represent either plus 0 or minus 0 based on what we have in the sign bits place. Basically, if the sign bit is 0, we will get the plus 0 that is positive 0 and if the sign bit is 1 then we will get the negative 0. Now this is kind of like the once complement representation where we also had two different zeros that is a negative 0 and a positive 0. Now if the 8 bits of the bias exponent have all 1 stored in them, basically if the exponent represents the value 255 in decimal and at the same time if in the 23 bits mantissa we have all zeros, for this particular bit sequence, if the sign bit is 0, the pattern will represent positive infinity. And if the sign bit is 1, the same pattern will represent negative infinity. Now, apart from these two patterns, that is, the decimal value 0 and the decimal value 255 in the exponent, if the exponent ranges from 1 to 254, in that case, whatever we have in the 23-bit mantissa portion, this will represent implicit normalized form. Observe, here the mantissa 23 bits are represented using x, that is all the 23 bits of the mantissa can either have 1 or 0 in any of the bit places. Now for these bit sequences, we will use this formula that is minus 1 raised to the power sine bit multiplied by 1 point m, which specifies the implicit normalized form, multiplied with 2 raised to the power biased exponent minus the bias that is 127. This formula will help us decode the floating point number stored in the 32-bit register. Now apart from these three, when the exponent is 0 
and mantissa is not equals to zero that is in the 23 bit mantissa we have any bit pattern except all zeros in that case that will represent the fractional form or denormalized form now what is fractional form this is actually the form of the pure fractions if you remember in case of pure fractions we don't have any integer part and therefore this particular formula that is minus 1 raised to the power sine bit multiplied by 0 point m which specifies pure fraction will be multiplied with 2 raised to the power minus 126 now why is so since it is pure fractional form we won't be having any exponent and thus we will only use the minimum range which in case of ieee 754 single precision is minus 126 and finally if in the exponent we have the value 255 that is all ones and simultaneously in the 23 bit mantissa we have anything other than all zeros that particular pattern whether that is accompanied by the sign bit 0 or 1 will represent nan that is not a number this not a number representation actually is used for exception handling like division by zeros arithmetic overflow and etc so to sum it up in the exponent field when we have zero based on what we have in mantissa we can either represent zero or we can represent fractional form when in the mantissa we have all zeros based on the sign bit that is either zero or one we will represent positive zero or negative zero and if in the 23 bit mantissa we have any pattern other than all zeros the exponent being zero will represent the fractional or denormalized form on the other hand in the exponent field we have all ones or in other words the exponent is representing the decimal value 255 if the mantissa has all zeros in that case based on the sign bit it will either represent positive infinity or negative infinity and with the same exponent if in the mantissa portion we have any pattern other than all zeros that pattern will represent not a number so apart from these two and these two anything else will be represented in implicit normalized form now coming to ieee 754 double precision if you remember it is of 64 bits that is simply the double of the single precision and in case of double precision the bit organization is something like this the sign bit is of one bit thereafter the biased exponent is of 11 bits and the mantissa is of 52 bits now the different representations are almost similar as ieee 754 single precision the only difference is in the exponent bias and in the number of bits so if we quickly go through the chart observe when the exponent bit is all zeros in that case if the mantissa 52 bits are also all zeros based on the sign bit we can either represent positive zero or negative zero similarly when the exponent is all zeros and in the 52 bits mantissa we have any other pattern than all zeros that will represent the fractional form then again if in the exponent we have all 11 ones that is the exponent is representing the decimal value 2047 and alongside that in the mantissa portion if we have all 52 zeros based on the sign bit it will either represent positive infinity or negative infinity likewise if the exponent 11 bits has all ones that is basically the decimal value 2047 and in the 52 bits mantissa we have any other pattern than all zeros that particular bit pattern irrespective of whether the sign bit is zero or one will represent not a number now except these if the exponent ranges from 1 to 2046 in that case whatever we have in the 52 bit mantissa portion it will be represented using implicit normalized form which can be decoded using this formula minus 1 raised to the power s multiplied by 1 point the 52 bit mantissa multiplied with 2 raised to the power e minus 1023 because for exponent of 11 bits the exponent bias is 1023 similarly in case of the fractional form since we are talking about pure fractions the formula that is minus 1 raised to the power s multiplied by 0 0.52 bit mantissa which specifies the pure fraction will also be multiplied with 2 raised to the power minus 1022 which is the lowest value in the range of exponents so these are the different representations of ieee 754 double precision standard
So in this session, we observed the IEEE 754 single precision standard and we also observed the IEEE 754 double precision standard. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the upcoming sessions, we will solve some interesting numerical problems to concrete the knowledge that we have acquired so far. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.